Good afternoon and welcome to episode 2 of the Reds Report. Barnsley just couldn't find a way past the stubborn Wigan defence as the home fans had to settle for a second consecutive championship goalless draw. The Reds stretched their unbeaten run to four games though and boss Paul Eckenbottom will at least be content to secure yet another clean sheet. Going into tonight's game with Nottingham Forest though, it's now 13 weeks without a win at home since Hecky and his side thrashed Rotherham United 4-0. We'll look back at the Wigan game, preview tonight's game with Not Knots Forest, and we'll also be speaking to your player of the month, Andy Idem, Stephen Foster, all this and more on the Reds Report with me, Chris Mason, and Carlo van der Watering. And we're here on the Red Report, episode two. Carlo, good afternoon and welcome to the Red Report. Afternoon, Chris. How are you? Yeah, how are we doing? You all right? I'm not doing too bad, mate. Your voice seems to be getting a little bit better, so we can uh, we can probably move on from the Barry White fiasco of last week. <laughs> but uh, we'd just like to start um, this week's episode on a little bit of a sombre note. We found out yesterday that Reds legend Paul Futcher has died at the age of 60, ex Grimsby, ex Barza defender, who used to love sporting. That very nice Shaw's Carpet star shirt, didn't he? He did, yeah. It's. Um, I, I said when we came into the office today, I can't remember um, Paul Futcher, but obviously very, very sad news. Our thoughts are with um, his friends and family um, during this sad time. So, Chris, Wigan, yeah. your thoughts? Wigan. Well, you know, I think my only sort of criticism of the Wigan game would be that um, I don't think we were the keeper enough. You look at the chances we had, we had 15 shots on goal, two on target, which has been a concern I think we spoke about in the past that we're, we're having a lot of the ball, we're having chances, but we're not hitting the target often enough. Um, I thought we controlled the game from start to finish and I think we can be disappointed we didn't get the three points, Carlo. We uh, we showed off how we've come as a club on, on Saturday against Wigan. A team that came up with us from that division that romped away with the league but they come up to work well they set up with their lineup. they played without a striker Will Shutt played up front a right midfielder at centre at centre midfield and the first sub is a left back when they make a change so that shows that uh, Warren Joyce had done his own work but he came here with a lot of respect for us and they, they got what they came for in my opinion Wigan and I'm just disappointed that we couldn't see uh, see ourselves over the line and get a much needed three points which is now going into tonight's game 13 weeks as I said in the intro without a home win yeah I, I think you need to look at and, and, and take the positives from it as well because I think there's been plenty of occasions when that sort of match we would have lost 1-0 or 2-0 sort of like at the death um, I, I agree I think especially when the keeper went off and Jesko Leining came on we could have maybe you know tested him a little bit more um, but overall, I was I, I was quite happy that at least we we dominated. We, we weren't dominated. I, the only way to start winning games is by stop letting goals in, and I think we've done that now for three matches in a row, uh, where we've sort of gone nil nil. So now was the time maybe to step it up in tonight against North Forest in front of the Sky cameras. Perhaps there's no better way with a hopefully a fully fit squad, um, you know, to get back on that goal uh, goal scoring train. Obviously, we made that little error last week, didn't we? Thinking Morsey was going to play when we when we picked the side, but apart from the Morsey. Clanger, we, we got the side bang on. Jackson came in, uh, Roberts came in at the side of Jackson. And the back four looked very solid. I, I see if there's a little bit of critique here and there for young James Bree, but I think he's finding his feet. His body's still growing. He's doing a decent job at fullback for a lad who last year was playing in, in League One. And Andy Iden, like a glove at left back, isn't he? He's fitted in very nicely. And he's. Uh, we'll be speaking to your player of the month that you voted tonight on the show, Andy Iden. And uh, I think he's, you know, he's doing a great job and he looked very comfortable on the ball on Saturday. Uh, wherever we play him, he looks comfortable. I think he's really, really quickly becoming a fan's favourite. Whether you stick him at left back, whether you stick him at right back, all the players are one of the one of the things I was talking about with the people set around me in the Ponty Andes that we've got a lot of ball players at the moment. They all feel comfortable with the ball at the feet. There's no panicking. There's no hoofing. It, 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 we tend to build it up from the back. Um, whilst it was frustrating that obviously you know it's another nil nil, but. It, it, it shows that it you know we're becoming a team that's very hard to score against. We just need to now try and find the two up front that can break the deadlock and, and, and start scoring goals again. Um, overall, I was quite pleased um, looking at the, um, the the lineup for Wigan. I sort of feared the worst, thinking it's going to be really awkward, it's going to be scrappy. But we controlled, we dominated. It's just that, that final that final thing of, of scoring that goal, isn't it? Yeah, and when you go back and watch the highlights on Channel 5 as well on, on Saturday night, as I did, they made it look like a very one-sided game, which it was. I mean, you, there's obviously the ability to mani manipulate highlights, but they didn't have the opportunity to do that. Wigan, for me, 
poorest side we've possibly seen at Oakwell so far this season. Poorest side that I think I've seen over the uh, the, the half a dozen games, or so, sorry, the dozen or so games that we've played, and I think that they could be in trouble. Warren Joyce had done a good job with that side in the international break to come total and get a point because we were free scoring at one point. The, I was just disappointed that we didn't get the three. I think we deserve the three. And maybe it's maybe time for a chance to freshen up up front for tonight against Nottingham Forest and maybe give the other lads a, a, a shot because I think Tom Bradshaw when he came on, he changed the uh, he changed it a bit up front when he came I, on. I, I think he does. He, he offers something different. Um, it 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 was quite negative. The Wigan lineup I thought was was quite negative. And looking ahead now at the games that that are coming up, when you talk about tonight, Forest, ignore the cameras, but you know Forest, Birmingham, the footballing sides under and. I think we've we've always played better against footballing sides, especially when we can hold on to the play, and um, we, we seem to have no problem holding on to the ball and finding an opening, whether that's on the left, whether that's on the right, and I'm hoping that will be on show tonight. Forest will not be, although their season's probably not going in and all the way they would have liked to. Um, I'm, I'm hoping for a more positive lineup from them, and I think that will allow, allow us to play more positive football as well. So. Very much looking forward to the lineup. Very much looking forward to the match. And and again, isn't it? You know, because it's Barnsley, because it's our club. Nothing. I want nothing. Nothing more than on a Friday night walking back home with three points in the bag and a decent performance in front of the cameras. And then at least we'll not be having the monk on with our respective partners all weekend as well, which is always a bonus. Um, Carla, we'll talk about the Notts Forest game in depth a little bit later on during the Reds Report podcast. Can you put in to three words the the Wigan game for yourself then? Uh, the Wigan game um, for me was um, one-sided. Um, disappointing. One-sided, disappointing. Is is non-ruthless? Can I use it as one word? Because I don't we'll think we're ruthless you. enough. I think we'll give you that one because your voice is better and you've shown up today. Thank you. Very very smart. I may add, <laughs> if you could see him, he looks fantastic. <laughs> Listen, uh, tonight's game against Nottingham Forest tickets are still available. Tickets prices have been reduced. Adults seventeen pounds. Concessions twelve quid. Under twelve seven quid. And they're available from the BFC box office and on the turnstile up until kickoff. We'll be back on the Reds Report with a new feature we like to call the Legend Suite with the legend that is Stephen Foster next on Barnsley Player HD. I'm Paul Eckingbottom and you're listening to the Reds Report on Barnsley Player HD. And welcome back to the Reds Report on Barnsley Player HD. New feature we've got this week, Carlo. Now we've started up episode two. We've coined the Legend Suite and joining us the first legend into the Legend Suite taking a seat with us is Stephen Foster. Good evening, Stephen. Good evening, chaps. You okay? Yes, fantastic. Thanks for joining us. It's been a, it's an absolute pleasure to speak to you again. Um, no problem, Stephen. What have you made to the red start to the season? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, obviously the the the, the uh, set off like a like a house on fire. You know, it's a uh, really good start to uh, to the campaign, um, and then they've uh, I'm saying they've, they've slipped just of late, but they've, they've steadied a little bit. Um, I don't think any of the uh, the fans would have expected them to uh, to to reach the heights that they did early on. Um, I think it was beyond maybe their expectations as well. But um, it's all about now this uh, this this busy Christmas period, and uh, everyone knows you know it can make or break uh, a season. Really, you know, if you have a good Christmas period, they can push on again up towards the uh, the playoffs. Um, I think a few seasons that uh, I that Barnsley were. Uh, we had some tricky periods over over Christmas, so uh, let's hope for a good one this time round. Stephen, um, the club have sort of identified a DNA that they want the players to sort of fit, and and part of that DNA is that they they want to sort of um, promote from within, so the underbelly of the clubs or the, the academy um, to try and get the chances to break through in the first team, which we've already seen a couple of times a season. How important is it then that those players at, at that crucial age? fall under the leadership of people like Bobby Hassel and Martin Devaney who are almost like homegrown legends and that know the club inside out. How important is that to have those sort of figures in that role at the club? I think it's vital to be fair. Obviously looking at my uh, my experience when I first broke into, uh, into league football, I had those uh, figures around me in, uh, in like Steve McCauley and, and, and Sean Smith at crew. Um, and they were, they were great leaders and great examples. They set great examples in the way they, they trained uh, in the way they set about the business, and and and, and you know they, they spoke to you as if you were part of the squad and team as well. Uh, you know, it's, it's vital that uh, you have those members in, in your uh, in your squad to bring the young players through. 
to give them the uh, the opportunity and uh, to give them the confidence as well that they are good enough to to get into the first team, stay in the first team, and, uh, and show everyone what they're capable of. Stephen, it's uh, Nottingham Forest on Sky Sports tonight. First off, will you be watching? And secondly, what sort of game do you think we'll get given Barnsley have gone in, uh, on the back of 2 0 nil results in the past couple of weeks? I certainly will be watching uh, whenever I can, trying to, uh, to, to 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 follow uh, to follow Barnsley. You know, they always uh, have a place in my heart, so I'll uh, I'll certainly be tuning in. Um, you know, I remember a couple of. Uh, uh, good games at uh, Oak. Well, we had against Forest when I was when I was there. It was always a fixture that I uh, particularly looked forward to. Um, I'm sure Barnsley would be looking to, uh, you know, get onto uh, winning ways again and, and get that good home form, which is uh, which is vital to do well in this league. Just um, because it's on Sky, does that add an extra dimension as a player? Do you feel almost like an extra pressure to perform because the cameras are there, or is it just another game of football with 22 players in a ball? No, it does. You know, it makes a, it makes a difference. You know, lads look forward to it a little bit more. You maybe get a little bit more um, nervous before the game, uh, but you obviously know you're on you're on show more than you would be on a regular, um, rather than a regular Saturday uh, afternoon game. Um, and it's about those players um, looking forward to it, but you know, raising raising the, the to do well and like I say, to showcase their to showcase their game. Um, but it is a little bit of a different approach, and uh, you tend to get a little bit more uh, more nervous, and and well, you look forward to it a little bit more as well. Right, Stephen, in the Legend Suite, we uh, have a certain set of questions, don't we, Carl? Yeah, we, we, we sit at the bar with a non-alcoholic drink and, and chat about your time at Barnsley. We certainly do. So, Stephen, first off, though, what are you up to nowadays? Well, a bit of, bit of uh, a few things really. I've got uh, got a business in in town, which is doing well in Warrington. Um, which uh, me and my wife started just before I finished playing, really. Um, so I helped to run uh, that business, which thankfully is doing doing well. Um, a bit of daddy daycare because um, my, my wife's got a career of her own now, so she can uh, look to uh, to develop that now. I've uh, now I've finished, um, and also looking to uh, to maybe start another business as well, which uh, we'll have to wait and see how that uh, how that develops. Interesting. About the football, your move to Barnsley. Just talk us through how how did that come about? Yeah, well, I mean, I nearly signed twelve months um, prior to the time that I actually did sign. Um, I spoke to uh, to the club um, when I was on a on a free after um, leaving crew, um, and it was uh, it was between really signing for for Barnsley or Burnley, um, and it was just basically the. Um, the location, the fact that Burnley was a little bit closer to home, um, it was a difficult part of my life, and my, my father just died, um, and it really went, was down to that. Um, and obviously, my time at, uh, at Burnley didn't go particularly well, though it was a great learning curve for me. And fortunately, sort of twelve, thirteen months on, um, you know, Barnsley came in for me. Um, I was just in, a, I think, a reserve game for, for Burnley, and the manager came over to me and asked whether I was looking forward to the game. Um, and, and you know, I thought he was. Uh, I don't know what he was in, in, you know, insinuating that, but um, then I realised. You know, he said that uh, that uh, Barnsley had been in for me and had accepted an offer. Um, and like I said, particularly with the the time I was having at Burnley, I wasn't really breaking into the into the first team. You know, it was a great opportunity for me to uh, to get back to playing first team football. And you know, fortunately for me, it went uh, you know it went really well. And we're certainly glad that. That move came about definitely uh, down at Barnsley. Uh, Stephen, we remember some great goals you scored for Barnsley, some important goals. So, what we want to know is what was your favourite Barnsley goal and why I'm thinking Doncaster at home, Liverpool in the FA Cup, Cardiff away on that Tuesday night. What was your favourite goal, Stephen, and why? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure a lot of people would kind of look to me to to think that it was the Liverpool uh, Liverpool goal, which obviously was was a great was a great experience and great moment for me. Um, I enjoyed my goal for uh, at home against uh, against Derby. Um, I think Simon uh, Davy was having a particularly difficult uh, time. He had a, a difficult start to the season, um, and it was an important uh, an important goal. But it was also my son's first game. Uh, that he came to, um, he's only a little little baby then, but uh, you know, I dedicated that goal to him, and it was one of my better goals as well. Um, I remember, uh, I remember rightly, my goals weren't too uh, fantastic to uh, to remember. You know, they're often scrappy sort of headers and things like that, but that one was a particularly nice uh, nice header, um, which I enjoyed. 
So as we sit here enjoying our non-alcoholic drinks in the legend suite, could you put your time at Barnsley into three words? Um, you know, it's a difficult one. Um, but it has to be... Um, <laughs> it is a tricky one. You can get a four if you want. Yeah, you're a legend. You know what I mean. Five. I mean, nobody's gonna. <laughs> um, do you know? I, I did this before, and I had three words in my head, and I can't remember what they were. Everybody are now. <laughs> we'll, 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 come, we'll, come, we'll come back to the question. Yeah, come back to it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Stephen. Aside from the Liverpool game, is there one particular match that stands out for you, and why? Whilst you were playing at Barnsley. Um, oh, there's there's a, there's a few. Um, I always mention um, a couple of perhaps in the way performances. Um, when people uh, interview me about my uh, my Barnsley career, um, there's one in particular which I think was a four-one win at Deepdale, and I just remember that everyone performed to the, the top of their levels. Really, played Preston off the park, and I think their fans actually clapped us off at the end. Um, and there's other games. You know, Plymouth Plymouth away was uh, was was a good one where we had to to win to stay up. Um, unfortunately, that uh, that came off for us, and uh, you know those, those uh, games which probably don't spring to mind um, with everyone, but um, certainly uh, stay stay in my mind for for different reasons, really. Um, looking back at your time at Barnsley, who, in your opinion, was the best player that you've played with while you were a Red? Again, it's another a difficult question. Um, there was there was players that um, you know they came in on on loan and, and, and kind of changed sort of seasons for us. Um, you know, I, I remember uh, Texera at that time when he came in the midfielder and you know, the couple of games that he played, he was absolutely fantastic. Um, for longer periods, um, you know, when I first came to the club, um, Anderson de Silva. Was an you know an exceptional midfielder you know and he, I think he signed at a similar time that, uh, that I I joined um, and he had a great effect on the uh, on the on the team. Um, there's many many uh, good players that have are, are played with at Barnsley. Um, Bobby Hassel was extremely you know consistent. Um, and partnerships I had. You know, Jason Shackle was a was an excellent partner. Um, Alongside me in the in the centre of defence, there there's lots of uh, there's lots of uh, you know really good players that I'm looking to play with. Uh, before we let you get off in the limo that we've got outside around the back of the East End for you, Stephen, we've got some <laughs> quick uh, some quick fire questions for you based on your time at Barnsley. Get you thinking on your feet a little bit. So first one, um, who was the worst dressed at Barnsley? Bobby Hassel, without a doubt. <laughs> I, hope he's, I hope he's listening as well. Hiya, <laughs> hiya, hiya Bobby. All right, yeah, take a seat, mate. I'll be waiting. <laughs> um, to, to be fair to him as well, you know, he stuck, he stuck with his gear as well. He got a lot of stick over it, but fair play to him. He stuck, uh, he stuck to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, who took the longest in the shower? Uh, um, Steely liked to uh, have a good shower and, uh, and soak himself up, so he's in there quite a while, yeah. Who was the biggest joker? Oh, Rob Coslock, without a doubt. I don't think that becomes uh, that's a shock for anyone. Rob <laughs> Coslock was the funniest all. man I've ever met in my life. And who was the biggest diva? Daniel Bogdanovich. He, um, yeah, he didn't have many friends at, uh, at Barnsley. He did well for us and scored some important goals, but um, didn't really connect with. Um, Many of the lads, and uh, yeah, it was uh, it was often the Daniel Bogdanovich show. Bless him. Was it, was it a language issue, or just it was it was a Daniel Bogdanovich well, issue? Well, he was misunderstood. Put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> and just finally, and this is a really easy question: Could you put your time in Barnsley into three words? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the time of my life really was. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, um, that's, that's not three words, but um, yeah, m- many special memories. And uh, whenever I talk about uh, my football career, I always say, you know, Barnsley was my, my favourite uh, period in, the, uh, in my career. So, uh, yeah, it's not three words, but it's, uh, it's close enough. It's a great statement to make as well, Stephen. Stephen, your driver's waiting for you. Just give us the wink. You're ready to get yourself off. Uh, if you're ever in the area, you want to come down to Redfern's Bar. 
come and meet us and we'll have a chat to, we'll have a chat Fantastic. one day one of the games cheers for coming make on make sure Steve. I will do my, my son's pestering me to, uh, to take him down to a home game soon so I'll, uh, I'll pop in and say hello excellent Fantastic. thanks, thanks Stephen cheers right. Stephen cheers thanks we'll, Jeps we'll cheers. be back on the Bye. Red Report with more after this I'm Mark Roberts and you're listening to the Red Report on Barnsley Player HD and we're back on Barnsley Player HD fantastic conversation that with Stephen Foster I can honestly say we've had him on, on every guy's or podcast or former show that we've done and he's always an absolute pleasure he's a he's a true gent isn't he and and, and if, if we're going to call this the legend suite very worthwhile person to sort of open it up for us and uh, keep your eyes peeled for uh, who's joining us next week in the suite we've uh, we've come out of the legend suite now and we've jumped on to Carlo's hot topic Carlo's big talking point of the week and what have you got for me this week mate yeah, I mean, you know, we've we, we, we touched already on on the Wigan result, and and the highlight for me of of the ninety minutes of football that we saw was the the the, the public, or the, you know, the people that were there shining their light for Patrick, and that was organised by the fans. It was carried out, and, and people from Wigan obviously joining in as well, and that sort of made me think that actually, if you look at the state of the club and the relationship with the fans now compared to say two three years ago, um, it seemed to have got a lot better. It seems to be that the club is far closer to its fans through fan engagement forums. We know that, you know, they, they, they've gone out. There's far more interaction on, on social media with the occasional joke coming in and, and there's some really sort of like witty banter on Twitter or on Facebook. Chris, as, as, as a supporter, you feel closer to the club now than you've ever done before? Yeah, most certainly. I think they're, they're more approachable than they've ever been. And that's... Um, after the Don Rowan days, I think the club have been a lot more approachable. They seem to want to engage supporters. They seem to be listening in every form, whether it be with refreshments, whether it be in the club shop, whether it be online on the website with videos they produce. Everything now is geared towards the supporter. Not saying it hasn't been in the past, but as a supporter, at times you, you felt like it wasn't and it was very much a closed box at all. Well, you didn't know about players until they'd walked through the door and shown the shirt on the pitch. You know, Twitter's I think has helped a lot, especially the um, the transfer window when it ended in August. The lads in uh, in the ground did a great job of teasing. Oh, well, there's another one come through the door. And I think five years ago there'd have been none of that. And I think it's a fantastic place to be around. I think the the results last year, the JPT, the playoff final, are winning both, was a fantastic springboard. I think the club used that opportunity to engage with the fans, but I completely agree. Whereas before, you went to Oakwell, it was a little bit like going to the theatre, and as the curtains opened, you saw who played, what had happened, or whatever. Um, and it, it's not like that. There is a constant interaction. Um, there's a nice little podcast of your Reds report. Again, yes. it's, it's some, you know, so... I, that relationship has come much closer. The bottle tops, somebody mentioned to me in the stand on Saturday saying it's fantastic that I can buy a bottle of soft drink and I don't have to give the lid to somebody, I can hold it. And I know lots of people that write in with various comments, complaints, and they get taken, and some can be acted upon and they will do. Others, people talk about things that can't be changed and, and the club will come back that they can't. So it seems to be because of that, that when we go through a little phase like now where we had the occasional nil-nil or we can't score a goal, People seem a lot happier and far more calmer than when it's a club that you don't really interact with, and people immediately step on the high horse and tell people to play. You know, the owner needs to go, or the manager needs to go, or the players needs to go. Everything seems a lot calmer, doesn't it, Chris? It does seem a lot calmer. You can't please everybody, and if you do side through Twitter like I was doing Saturday night, you can't please everybody. But I think the majority, and I would say. It's a fair comment to say that 95% of the people that come into it, well, the 95% of people that deal with the club on a daily basis or a weekly basis are happy with everything that's being churned out by the football club. It's a, it, it's a great atmosphere inside the ground. Two or three years ago, a 1-0 defeat could have caused a near riot. A 0-0 draw could have caused booze at full time. But everybody's pulling for the same thing, I think. that they, They're they pulling for the, for the custodian now at the minute as well. They're pulling for the local lad who's manager. They're pulling for the likes of Hecky and Martin Devaney to do well. And all in all, I think this whole building from the bottom up like they have done and putting that DNA in place and not wavering off it, by the way, because they could have quite easily done that when Lee Johnson left. They could have not promoted Paul Heckingbottom and they could have completely gone off track with that and, got it and gone, gone for what's a so-called big name. But I think because they've stuck to their models, stuck to everything that they want to do, it's reaped rewards with the, with the great fan support that we saw Saturday against Wigan and that we will see tonight again for Patrick when the flag's unveiled and the lights are on again on the sky cameras. Completely, and I think part of sticking to that DNA, because that's worked, and the scouting that works, obviously working as well, because when you see players like Andy Adam 
sort of playing, whether it's on left back, whether it's on right back, growing into, in my words, still think he will be one of those Barnsley legends that in five, six, seven years' time we'll have on the phone on the legend suite. Um, there's a confidence that the club is in the right hands with the right people in the right jobs driving us forward. And there's a relationship with the fans, not only Saturday at three o'clock or a Friday night at quarter to eight, but only also on a Wednesday afternoon at three o'clock when maybe nothing is happening and they take us back to the Premier League season or they take us back to a previous match against next week opponent and how we went on. One of those things, I suppose, is the flexi ticket. Um, which, with Christmas coming up, if you know of a Barnsley fan, um, you know, five matches uh, works out at 23 quid a match. And when you look at the calendar and some of the big sides that still need to come to Oakwell, um, available from the box office, or if you go to uh, www.barnsleyfc.co.uk forward slash tickets. What's after the break? We'll be speaking to October Player of the Month, Andy Idem, after the break on the Red Report. I'm Angus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Angus. <laughs> I'm Angus McDonald, and you're listening to the Reds Report on Barnsley Player HD. Right, we're back on Barnsley Player HD on the Reds Report episode two, and joining us now is the man that was voted by Reds fans as the October Player of the Month with sixty percent of the vote, Andy Idem. Andy, good evening. How you doing? You alright? Doing fantastic, and you're doing not so bad yourself, mate. You've uh, obviously voted Player of the Month for October. Wasn't a bad month for yourself, was it? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was it was good. Um, happy to obviously been um, voted Player of the Month, and um, I think even as a whole, our team's been doing well. So it's it's um it's made it easier for me to perform well as well. Um, Andy, looking back on the the Wigan match, uh, another nil nil draw. Um, Wigan seemed to come for the draw for the nil nil. What was it like playing in a match like that? Um, to an extent, it was a little bit frustrating because there was obviously sitting sitting off us and we were trying to break them down. But you know, it was one of them. It was one of them games. Uh, we to take the positive. We didn't lose, but we obviously wanted to um, get the whole three points. And in recent weeks, you've seen yourself switch over from right back to left back. Quite the utility player along that back line. How have you found the switch from right to left for yourself? Has it just been a seamless transition? Um, at times it, it is a little bit awkward because obviously I'm I'm naturally right footed, but you know it's it's an opportunity for me to try and improve my left foot, and that's what I've been doing doing in training and um, on different where my position is. Sometimes it is a little bit awkward, but like I say, I've been um, been working on it in the training ground, and hopefully it, it, it pays off while I'm on the pitch. Um, Forest at home tonight in front of the Sky cameras. What sort of game are you expecting? Um, I'm expecting a good game to be fair. Forest are a good side, and um, I think they're probably going to come and um, and and try and talk and try to win. I think it's going to be completely different against Wigan. So um, yeah, it'll be it'll be a good game. We're going to go out go out there and um, try and do our best to uh, to get the three points. Right, we're going to doff our Colombo hats now as the Red Reports investigates a little bit more about Andy Idem. Andy, if you were to uh, be on the coach to an away game and your headphones broke. Who wouldn't you want? Who, who, who wouldn't you? Sorry, not want to be sat next to. Um. Ooh, who might give you a bit of earache? Who's? Oh, as in, as in, who's going to just talk to me all the time? Yeah. <laughs> Either that or a really bad taste in music. <laughs> uh, probably Colin Horan. and he nags me a bit too much sometimes. <laughs> um, Andy, have you got a pet hate? And if so, what is it? Pet hate. Yes. Yeah. Um, pet hate. Pet hate. The cold. The cold. At the moment, it's freezing, and when I get out there, I'm a bit grumpy. <laughs> yeah, the cold at the moment. That's just off the top of my head. Andy, if we came to your house for a bite to eat, what would you make us? Uh, steak and chips. Happy with that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very, yeah, yeah, very happy, happy with that. that yeah. On a similar level, if if we invited you here to our studio in Oakwell, um, what would you like to make us? What would you like us to make for you? Um, and don't come up with some sort of Ghanaian dish that we haven't heard of. We're very basic, <laughs> by, us. We're basic. By, by, the, by the sounds of it, I don't think you lot can cook, so I'll probably send one of you to get some fish and chips. That's maybe. fine. Right. We can do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Andy, if you could feature on the cover of the programme, be read with any any of your favourite footballers, who would it be? Um, David Beckham. 
David you know, he's not really a footballer at the moment, but yeah, David Beckham. Nah, David Beckham is a good choice. Um, yeah, I think I think we look alike. That's why. <laughs> I've always said it. I've always said it. Um, on a similar level, then I've just had Steven Spielberg on the phone before we came in the studio with Rob, and, and he wants to make um, a film. Yitz, the story of my life. Who's going to play you in in in, the, in a film based on your life? Ah, oh, Denzel Washington. Has to be, hasn't it? Den- yeah. Never made a bad film either, has he? So <laughs> at least yeah, nah, he needs to be a good one. Exactly. <laughs> Andy, we're having a, um, an end of season fancy dress party. Who or what are you going to come dressed as? Uh, Mr. Incredible. Fantastic. Don't need to get changed, does he? No. It just <laughs> is, <right>? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is the one thing that Barnsley fans don't know about you yet? Because obviously you're just about to tell us all. Um. You know what? My name's actually Andrew. I don't think no one knows that. Oh. There you go. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. You go. So if anybody yeah. meets him around the ground tonight, it's Andrew. So we'll no, 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 no. Just, <laughs> just, just Andy, yeah, you <laughs> Yids will do, that's it. <laughs> and before we get into a quick bit of two-word association, Andy, if you could be a superhero, who would you be and why? Um, Mr. Invisible. Mr. Invisible. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Know what you lot are talking about, me, mate? But I'm not, <laughs> it, but I'm not it, around. It, it's all good stuff, right? A bit <laughs> of two-word association. We're going to mention some uh, players and stuff here at the club. First thing that comes into your mind. So, Paul Hackingbottom. Good coach. Sam Winall. Moni. Adam Hamill. Tricky. Conor Horan. Thinks he's good looking. <laughs> He Jamie, <laughs> that's our corner. Jamie, <laughs> Jamie Clapham. Hmm. Oh, wait, Jamie Clapham. Do I get? Do I run out of time or not? No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> uh, uh, cautious. Cautious. That's that's good for yeah. a defender. And lastly, yeah. Mike Roberts. Bandley. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you this afternoon on yeah. the Reds Report. Good luck for the game tonight with Notts Forest. And hopefully we'll bring those three points home. Top man, nice one. Cheers, Andy. Fantastic. Speak Cheers, again. Andy. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Andy Idem, your October Player of the Month right, for sorry. Barnsley Football Club. No, sorry, it was Andrew Yidem. Yes, yeah, uh, October, man of... Yeah. And we've, we've found out tonight that I think Conor Hurrahan likes him a little bit too much by the sounds of things and he doesn't want to sit next to him on the bus if his headphones are broke so you know Connor if you're listening don't sit next to Andy on the bus he doesn't want you to mate we'll be back on the Reds Report with more after this short break I'm Connor Horan and you're listening to Reds Report on Barnsley Player HD and welcome back to the Reds Report on Barnsley Player HD um, we'd just like to remind you that we've got a jam-packed edition of the B Red Match Day programme for tonight Exclusive interview with Mark Roberts. We've got regular fan columns from Neil Richardson, Ian McMillan, and this week's guest writer is Les Payne. Fans quiz, it's Gavin Savile takes on Mark Roberts. Oh, Rob Oi. Do you think Rob will win that one? He'll win everyone. He'll win everyone. He, as Andy, as Mr. Incredible just said to us on the line, he's just Barnsley. <laughs> just Mark Roberts. Mr. Barnsley. Mr. Barnsley. And we've got Barnsley player HD commentator Matt Bailey discussing the 1996 97 promotion season, what he remembers, and his memories from that particular season. Right then, Notts Forest tonight. It's very close now, the game. I know, I'm going to be caught on. Um, I'm just looking forward to a team coming here willing to play football because I think that's the, the, the type of game where, where we can excel. We, you know, we have defending, I think our defence has looked solid for quite some time now. Um, midfield, again, with, with, with Connor and with Josh, it just looked tight, didn't it, with the trickery on the, um, with Watkins on one side, Ryan Kent on the other side. Up front, it's it's the goals we need. Don't have to come from up front. We've got Connor, we've got Ryan Kent, Adam Hamill. Maybe it's time to look at a Bradshaw. I mean, I don't know. I do know that Forrest will line up completely different and, and far more attacking than what Wigan did. And I think that's, that's completely and utterly in our benefit. So you, you mentioned Tom Bradshaw, then he's, he's got a start, hasn't he? I just, I... I it's, it's hard, isn't it? Because I'm, I'm not the manager. I look when he comes on and I think, right, there's a reason why he's not in the, in the team at the moment. And you could say, well, you know, we, we haven't really lost since, since you know, since he played or not been playing. We've not been scoring much. I think he's just 
completely different player. Sometimes that's what needed. And I think if at 60 minutes you're not getting any joy, bringing somebody on with the energy and the pace of the trickery he's got, that might just unlock something. That was meant one of the many criticisms, not one of the, one of the few criticisms, I should say, from last Saturday. The, the change maybe came a little bit too late because he did add a spark when he came on. And I think that's the he, he brings something different, doesn't he? He, he? he does. I think the problem always is... When, when the substitution work, people will say, why didn't we do it quicker? Sometimes it doesn't and there's no impact. Or you actually go back a bit. The opposition might be thinking, oh, you know, they're trying this now, they're trying it another way. So I, I complete trust in, in, in Haki and, and who he brings on at when. It, it's always very easy, isn't it, to sit in the ponty and we, we your scarf and you're out and saying, I think you ought to do this, this, this. We don't see him during the week. Um, same with Adam Hamill. You know, there's a reason why he's not there. And again, you know, you look at Marley Watkins down that side and what he brings, completely different than what Adam Hamill brings. But it's working, isn't it? And and I looked at the lineup against Wigan and every single one of those could, could get us a goal, mm-hmm. except maybe from Adam Davies. So no, I'm really looking forward to it. And I just want to, to watch a game of football of 90 minutes where two teams are trying to win it rather than one sitting back with no recognised strikers just hoping out for a point because that, that's not my idea of a, 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 a Saturday afternoon at Oakwell. No, we mentioned it in the opening, Carlo. It's now 13 weeks without a win at home since they thrashed Rotherham 4 0. Is that an albatross around the neck now? Because it, it's getting mentioned in the media, it's been mentioned and picked up on by ourselves. I know Paul does say it doesn't matter where the points come, but. They surely sooner or later need to win and get him at home. Yeah, I, I think the, the saving grace is that there's been a lot of draws, haven't there? If you look at a Bristol City, you look at um, obviously Aston the Wigan Villa. Aston Villa, you look at the Wigan match, so yeah. some good draws in there. Yes, there is. You know, Bristol City were flying high, Aston Villa were flying high, so um, it, we've stabilised our ship. Stephen Foster referred to it, we've stabilised it where we were losing. Even if you look at the Newcastle, where two individual mistakes led to, to losing 2 0, which is no disgrace against the team that's running away with the lead. I just think um, the, the the first chance we get to get a goal and to hold on to it, that will then it, it it it's a little bit like what happened last season. I think if we get that home win, that confidence starts. We've got very creative players, a very young set of players, very very creative. And I think if we can get that first goal, we get to see that, that side playing as we did against Rotherham, where it's free flowing football, which enters from the left, from the right, from set pieces, and all over the pitch. Notts Forest, obviously, we say at home tonight. If any changes, would you make any at all from last weekend? And obviously, a clean sheet, so people are happy. The back four will probably stay the same. Morsey's now available to play tonight's game. If any changes at all, what would you make, Carlo? Um, I, I, again, you know, I, as a fan, me as a person doing this with you, I'd probably like us to start with with the Tom Bradshaw. Maybe a bet with Brett Sean Armstrong and see what that you know. Interesting part. Um, just to see because I think um, I'm not saying we, we're becoming um, sort of easy to, to to mark out of the match when we've got win all up front. But I think just to try something different can sometimes yeah. confuse the opposition as well. Can't we've you? got a lot of ability up front. We spoke about it at length. We've got we've a got lot of choices. Four strikers and Marley Watkins that can also go in there and Stephen Payne when he's fit. So there is an opportunity to rotate it. Do you fancy us tonight against Forest? I do. I do, and I think. If anything, they'll have got lots of positive from last week. A team like that to dominate and not score, you know, they they had eleven men behind the ball, didn't they? So it, it, it was always going to be hard. But I think there was some good football in patches, free throwing football, some some wonderful touches in midfield. I think if we can build on that and get that confidence going, maybe maybe the the, the fact that the cameras are there and it's live on Sky that might just ignite and give that extra half percent for somebody to have that shot or, or do that header. And I don't know. So now I'm definitely looking forward to it. And I think this can be the start of a sort of like a mini revival of the Reds at home. But it's certainly, it's four games unbeaten for Barnes. And obviously, we're not waving the, the flag for changes tonight. The 11 that's put out is obviously going to be strong enough if it's the same as last Saturday. What they've got to realise is this team tonight is going to be a completely different game. And it might be a game that probably suits us more against Notts Forest. You've said that yourself. No orthodox striker last week from Wigan. Forrester coming off a good win at Portman Road. Yep. Also on Sky last Saturday tea time. So, really looking forward to the game. I think we'll take the game. I know we said this last week and we. You know, we obviously think we'll always do well at home on our own turf. But um, I fancy us tonight to win the game. And I think, uh, you know, like I say, a, a nice little run that we'll be on then. That'll be five unbeaten and hopefully. And if you listen to this and you fancy coming down tonight, don't forget the ticket prices have increased by two quid in all areas. 
uh, adults £17 concessions £12 under 7 7 quid available from the box office and on this turn tiles up to kick off yeah we, we talked about the squad earlier Chris um, and we had a sort of discussion driving in today we put out on Twitter the top three and, and you know we, we wanted the fans sort of views on what top three we could talk about um, one of the ones I came up which I quite like which, which I'm going to ask you about now is let's look at three players that left Barnsley on to either what they thought were going to be better things that have either worked out or not. So the example on my top of my tongue has to be, if you look at John Stones, 20 odd matches for the Reds, signs for Everton, from Everton gets a record move to Man City. Can I say he's an England regular? Well, yes. probably with the management team we've got, maybe not, but you know, plays for England, that works for him. So who, who would be your first one that you say that worked out? That worked out? It's probably unpopular. Neil Redfern, it worked out for Neil. He ended up having a career in the Premier League with Charlton. I know they got relegated after one season, but he stayed in that Premier League spotlight that he'd created for himself the year before whilst playing for Barnsley. Went on to play in the Premier League for Bradford City as well. So my first one would be, despite the unpopularity of it, would be uh, our Neil. Yeah, he's often seen as Mr Barnsley and only ever for Barnsley, and that's definitely not the case. Um, well, he was in the programme last week. My favourite player, Ari Andersil. You know, he was... Well liked at Barnsley, um, unlucky throughout the, the the Premier League season with injuries. But you know he went on to captain Portsmouth and Wigan, Wigan in the Premier League as well, I believe. Um, a, a very likable player, a very intelligent player, and you know when, when he came from I believe Telstar over to, to, to Barnsley, nobody knew who he was. But you know a bit of a gem that we found. I firmly believe we we brought him on, and and, and he went on to bigger and better things. So I think Ariane Desir is my uh, is my number two. Is your number two? I'm going to go for one that thought he was um, going to move on to better things, but didn't, and I'm going to pick out Mr. Craig Davis. He went to Bolton for whatever it was, I think half a million or something along those lines, or a quarter of a million pounds. He went there, scored a couple of goals for Bolton, got relegated with that Bolton side, ended up in the same division with Barnsley playing for Wigan and came on last Saturday instead of Will Griggan. I'm still scratching my head about that decision now from Warren Joyce. So my number two, players who thought they were moving on to better things but it didn't quite work out for them, is Craig Davis. Um, my number three, well, jury's still out. He's only a young lad, Mason Holgate. Um, got the move to Everton. You know, he was very, I think it was very clear in the media that he he, he, he tried to forge a move to, to, you know, to bigger and better things. I know he's he's, he's played some sort of like yes. development matches and also and he featured. the opening game. Yeah, Tottenham. Uh, started the opening game. He's been called for England in the 20s, I believe, as well. Yeah. Um, so on that level for him, it's definitely worked out. Not yet a regular in the um, in the Everton team, but yeah, Mason Holgate, and I'm sure in the next two three years we'll find out whether that move or will it take another move to another club for us to see the best from Mason. I think I need to thank Stephen Foster for my final one, and again I'm going on the negative players who thought they're moving on to bigger and better things. Thanks for that, Stephen. I'll get you a drink next time you're with us in the Legend Suite. And all I've got to say is Daniel Leigwanovic, and I think I'll <laughs> leave it at that for top threes this week. So, Carlo, another episode down. Not as far as coming up. I'm going to go grab my coat. You'll get yours. We'll get off down to the mount. Quick pint, back to Red Ferns. And then we'll enjoy the game, won't we? Yeah, hope everybody enjoys the game uh, this evening. We'll be back next week on the Reds Report. And don't forget, if you want to get in contact, do that via Twitter. Hope you enjoyed the match. Hope you enjoyed the podcast. And uh, look forward to speaking to you again next week. Where we'll hopefully be joined by Martin Devaney, who this week was ill. Couldn't join us this week. He's got a sore throat, so we'll hopefully go in inside out well with a new feature next week with Reds coach Martin Devaney. Cheers for joining us on the Reds Report.